Hello Booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Book As In Books. This is my list for the Booktube spin, the sixth Booktube spin, but it's going to be my first because I've never participated before. I was preparing for various tags and for various readathons, upcoming readathons, and I was pulling out some books from my shelves, and I was suddenly taken by a very strong urge to reread a whole bunch of books. So I decided that my list of 20 books for the booktube spin would all be rereads. So I cannot be disappointed by the number that comes out because I know what's in all of these books and I want to read them. Well, reread them. So I grouped the books into five categories, so five groups of four, and um, yes, some of them you may see them again in upcoming videos on my channel for tags, for example, or piles of possibilities for the month of May, or things like that. So let's start. Number, well, one to four will be these books, and they have in common of being by Canadian authors. The first one is The Outlander by Germaine Guévremont. Um, this one I want to reread because I think this could be my favorite book of all time and I just need to reread it just to be sure. At number two, there is The Tin Flute by Gabrielle Roy. This is also one of my favorite books of all time. And I last year I talked about it and I said, if you have just one book of French Canadian literature to read in your life, make it this one. And I stand by that. And that convinced two booktubers and a few viewers to group read the, the book and they loved it. And I heard, uh, when I heard them talk about it, I just wanted to reread the book again. So it's at my number two. Oh, and, and these two booktubers were Sandy from uh, Miss Reads A Lot and Sherry Swearingen. And I will leave links to their reviews of this magnificent book in the description box below. And then the third, number three, would be Green Grass Running Water by Thomas King. I read this one a certain number of years ago and I just, I, I loved it. First things first, I loved it. But when I reached the end, I sort of realized that many, many things had passed way above my head. I did not grasp everything there was to grasp in this book, so I would like to reread it. And at number four, there's The Wars by Timothy Findlay. I read that, I'm going to say 25 years ago. I don't exactly remember. However, there is a readathon coming up in May, which is hosted by Katie from Books and Things about historical novels. And this one is a historical novel set to a during or right after World War One, So th that could be relevant for that. And um, I remember nothing else about the book, except that I liked it. I remember liking the book, but I have no idea what it's about other than that. So that's eight, number four. And then for the next four books, I am crossing the Atlantic. We are going to France. At number five, The Charter House of Parma by Stendhal. It's another one that I read 20, 25 years ago. More 25, this one. Um, and I remember being just flabbergasted, bowled over by this book, thinking, wow, this is one of the best books ever written. And I remember almost nothing about it. So I want to reread it just to make sure that it's really, really good and just to remember, remember what it's about. <laughs> At number six, is a Colomba by Prosper Mérimée. Now, uh, this one, uh, there are three novellas, short stories um, in a single book. It's just Colomba that I want to reread, so the number six is only Colomba. It is set in Corsica in the 19th century. It's probably full of cliches, but I don't care. I like it. I like it. <laughs> At number seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes, I know how to count, is Wooden Crosses by Roland d'Argelès. Uh, yeah, uh, this is, this fits another readathon for the month of May. It's May of the Moderns, and one of the prompts is to read a book written by um, a participant of World War I about World War I. And in this case, uh, Roland d'Argelès did volunteer for World War I, and he wrote this book, and it was published in 1919, or perhaps 1918. Um, so this is one I would like to reread because I read it a long time ago and I remember almost nothing about it. This is going to be a theme in this list. And then the next one is Daniel Pénac, The Scapegoat. This one I do remember stuff about it. This one is just a 
just a light read. Um, the main character works for a department store and his job is to be the scapegoat. So whenever a customer complains, he's called up and he's yelled at and the customer is happy because somebody got blamed for the mistake. So it's it's an absurd premise, but it leads to even more absurd things. And I just, it's an entire, there's, there is an entire series. This is just the first book, uh, but I haven't read this in a while. So I think it would be fun to reread it. Okay, the next group of four. If you cannot see what they have in common, go watch another channel. <laughs> I'm rude, but it's kind of obvious. So at number nine, Mansfield Park. 10, Northanger Abbey. 11, Persuasion. 12, Pride and Prejudice. D did you see the common theme there? I hope so. So I said earlier in the year that I wanted to reread most of Jane Austen because I wanted to do a ranking for Jane Austen July. So we are in April, so there's April, May, June, July, four books, four months, I have plenty of time and I just need perhaps a little nudge to read one of them. Um, these two I absolutely want to reread and if I have time these two also. But uh, yes, the, the book tube spin is just a good occasion to give me the little nudge, the little push that I need. And then for number... 13 to 16, again, another common theme. Uh, in January, I read The Sinner and the Saint by Kevin Birmingham, which was about the writing of Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. And that made me want to reread Crime and Punishment and a whole bunch of other books by Dostoevsky. So here they are, books I would like to reread. At number 13, Crime and Punishment. 14, The Eternal Husband. 15, The Idiot, and 16, The Gambler. And then finally, the last group for number 17 to 20 is nonfiction. I am a reader of nonfiction, and so far there's none on this list. Um, they have nothing else in common if the thing they have in common that is that they're all over the place, uh, theme-wise. So uh, two of them were not translated in English, unfortunately, but I want to reread them anyway. So here we have Patience dans l'Azur by Hubert Reeves. This one is not translated in English. It is a book about the cosmos, about um, how it was created, how it works, about cosmology. Uh, it covers the basics and it's one of the first ones that I read on the subject and I really liked it and uh, I would like to reread it. And then we have a history book, The Deadly Sisterhood by Leonie Frida. This is about six women who lived during the Italian Renaissance. So that is the 15th century in Italy. Um, a couple of them were part of the Medici family. There was Caterina Sforza, there was uh, Lucretia Borgia. And I don't remember the other two. I think they were from the Este family. Uh, but anyway, that's the reason why I want to reread the book. I don't remember enough of it. And I just remembered that I really liked it. So I would like to reread it just to refresh my memory. At number 19, Through the Language Glass, Why the World Looks Different in Other Languages by Guy Deutscher. I read a book by Guy Deutscher last year, which was The Unfolding of Language, which I really liked. And it re reminded me of this book that I had read a certain number of years ago, like 10 years ago, and I want to reread it. Uh, I remember that it went all over the world looking at a whole bunch of different languages to see how they um, how they are cutting out reality. For example, colors. Uh, we take it for granted that the blue and green are different colors, but in some languages it's just one and the same, um, or th things like that. It, it, it just goes all over the world and see how languages work and how languages shape the way we see reality, we see the world around us. And finally, at number 20 is another book that was not that is not translated in English, and I think it's an absolute shame. This is Au Cœur de l'Orchestre by Christian Merlin. The author is a uh, classical music uh, reviewer um, for the newspaper Le Figaro in France. And in this book, he presents the orchestra, how the orchestra works, uh, how you join an orchestra, uh, once you join the orchestra, how you're paid, what a day looks like, um, things that go well, things that go bad. So that's the first section. The second section goes through every section of the orchestra, section by section, first violin, second violins, cellos, bass, 
uh, woodwinds and then everything section by section what they do what each instrument does and uh, important players and all of that and the third section is about uh, the conductor the relation between the conductor and the players and it's just one of the best books about classical music I've ever read and it's just a shame that it's not translated in English so uh, that's number 20 so that is it. These are the 20 books that I've listed for the booktube spin. I'd be very happy if any number comes up because I want to read them all. Well, reread them all because I know they're good. I've read them. So that is it for me. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!